All right, here's the last of a seemingly infinite string of hypothesis testing and confidence interval videos. What I'm gonna do in this one will be dealing with two proportions uh, like I did in the previous video, except this time instead of doing hypothesis testing with these two proportions, I'm gonna make a confidence interval with these two proportions. So I'm gonna use the same example because I'm so tired of making these, uh, where we have a sample of 200 millennials and 140 of them uh, fit the given criteria, own an iPhone in this case. And we have another sample of 150 baby boomers and 100 of them own an iPhone. And so last time we were trying to conclude um, that the proportion of all millennials that own an iPhone is different than the proportion of all baby boomers. What I'd like to do on this one is create a, I don't know, 99% confidence interval for the difference in the proportions of iPhone ownership between millennials and baby boomers. Maybe I can write all that. All right, uh, so you probably won't be too surprised to hear that it's gonna mimic what we did in the previous video pretty closely, where essentially we're gonna type in these four numbers into a calculator function, it'll be a new calculator function, and then we're gonna tell it the level of confidence that we want to create for our confidence interval, and it'll spit out some numbers, and we'll use those numbers to draw a picture and then state our conclusion. Then essentially we'll be done. Note that we could talk about the shape, the center, and the spread. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the formulas get kind of ugly when you get beyond chapter four in our class. So I tell you to stop bothering. But formulas do exist. And if you wanted to look them up, you certainly could. At any rate, for this class, the first step, what you'll be asked to do is just sketch the picture. So what you do to get the picture is you hit the stack key and then go to tests. And instead of selecting two prop Z test, which is this guy that we selected last time, you're gonna look for the interval version of this thing, two prop Z interval. And you'll find it right here, two prop Z interval. And to make a two prop Z interval, you need to know X1, N1, X2, and N2. And it's worth pointing out that you have freedom on which one are your ones and which one are your twos. But the way it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna find the difference. It's gonna take the ones and then it's gonna subtract the twos. So I'm gonna put in millennials for my ones, um, but that's kind of arbitrary. You could put in whichever group for your ones and whichever group for your twos, it doesn't matter. And I guess I don't have to type those in again since they're already in here. Um, and then I'll tell it my level of confidence, which is 99%. But I just want to make note that because the millennials are one, if I see positive numbers in my output, those will correspond to the millennials owning more iPhones in this example. And if I see negative numbers in my output, that'll correspond with millennials owning less iPhones. In other words, baby boomers owning more iPhones. So let's see what happens. There's my confidence interval. So I can sketch this picture. With confidence intervals, I usually ask for three things in your picture. Two of them are pretty straightforward. You want a 99% confidence interval. So that tells you to shade the middle 99%, nothing new there. And then you want the bounds of your interval. And again, nothing new there. Those come straight out of your calculator. So it's negative. I don't know if you want to format these as a percentage or not. I guess it doesn't really matter if you write a decimal or a percentage. Maybe I'll write them as a decimal down here and then convert them to a percentage when I make my conclusion. So I got negative 0 0.0963. And then I got positive. 16, uh, 29, so that they're both rounded to four decimal places, I guess. Sure. Uh, I also typically like it if you'd include a point estimate. Um, it doesn't give it to you explicitly in this output, just like it didn't give it to you explicitly when you did a two sample T interval. Uh, all best you can do is subtract these two values. So maybe you recall with two sample T interval, you got X1, X bar one here and X bar two here and you could subtract those two values to find the point estimate. It's kind of the same idea, except instead of X bars, they're P hats, because instead of sample averages, they're sample proportions. So I could take this 0.7 and subtract this 0.66667 and get 0 0.03 repeating. So I guess if I'm doing four decimal places, maybe it would look like this. Ah, fine. Oh, and worth pointing out, another way you can get this is your point estimate is always halfway in between the bounds of your interval. So you could add up these two numbers uh, sure, I guess I should show you that that works. So negative 0 0.9, 0.0963. And then add to that positive 0 0.1629. And then divide that answer by two to find the number that's kind of halfway in between the two of these guys. And you'll get the same answer. So either by subtracting the two p hats or by finding the number halfway in between, 
you get your point estimate. And if you have all these three things in there, I'm thrilled really at this point. Um, that would be the picture that you want to draw. And then what you want to do is state your conclusion. And it kind of starts out the same way they've been starting out. I am 99% confident or sure that, and then make sure that you're talking about the population proportions. So the proportion of all millennials who own an iPhone is between, and this is where you have to kind of interpret your answer a little bit. Remember, because we put in the millennial information into the ones, these are kind of relative to the millennials. So this is saying 9% less for the millennials, and this is saying 16% more for the millennials. So the proportion of all millennials who own an iPhone is between 9.63% less and 16.29% more than the other group, the proportion of all baby boomers that own an iPhone. And as always, your answer doesn't have to look exactly like this. You know, this idea would be great. What you're really keying on here is make sure you understand that negative means less, positive means more, and these are um, kind of relative to whichever group you put in as the ones. So if you had decided to do this a little bit different and made this N1, X1, N2, X2, be totally fine. It's just your picture would look a little bit different. This would be negative 0.1629. This would be positive 0 0.0963. And this would be negative 0 0.0333 because then everything would be relative to the baby boomers if you made them the first group. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, one other comment that I want to make. Oh, yeah, make sure that you have the uh, more and less ideas. Make sure you understand the negatives. And then also make sure that you make it clear that you understand that we're talking about population proportions here that really big picture what we're doing, it's easy to lose track of the big picture, is we're taking sample proportions and using them to draw conclusions about population proportions. So it's the same theme that we've been seeing this whole class, sample info to draw conclusions about population info. It's just we do it with means and we do it with proportions and we can do it with one mean or two means and one proportion or two proportions. And now we've seen all of those different instances. So now we've seen each of the different cases that you'll ever see in this class. So I suppose I could end this video here.